Okay, hello everybody and welcome to Neil Leibovitz and the Dynamic Sales Mastering the Art of Contracting and Staffing. I promise you this is going to be a really uh, intensive and awesome session full of great information that helps you really master this end of the business, whether you're already in it or whether you are a smaller independent recruiter that's looking to get into it. If you don't know me, please do me a favor, check me out on on LinkedIn. My name, of course, is Neil Leibovitz. I'm a CPA, I'm a CPC, I'm a CTS, and I've been doing nothing but training and recruiting uh, in the industry for the last five years. I have over 25 years of experience within the staffing and recruiting world. And the long and short of it is uh, I started for uh, the world's largest financial uh, staffing firm, became a perm division manager, worked myself up, became an area manager. I then uh, worked for Agilon Professional Staffing, where I worked myself up from a branch VP to ultimately President and COO of North America. In my last year, I was with ADECO as Global President uh, for several of the business lines. So I am really a true contracting staffing guru, and I really want to share with you some of the best training uh, that I've ever really been able to give. Now, the reason that I'm doing this, this training is completely uh, for free. So again, thanks for joining. Um, you can get access to this recorded webinar and all of my recorded content for free. All that, that we ask is that you process at least one temp, one contractor through our back office service. And you can find out a lot more of that online. I'll give you the link in a little bit. Um, you're probably already using some firms, especially you smaller folk. So even if you just want to put one person out and try us, you will get all of my stuff for free, which includes some really incredible things that I'll, I'll get into a little bit later. So ongoing temp and contracting training, uh, regular monthly uh, you know webinars, and my my full entire back office. It is, and again, this is really the only commercial part that I have on it. Just telling you why we do it. We really provide a complete turnkey contracting payroll solution for you to enable you to put more profit in your pocket. Not only are we less expensive than probably who you are using, but you get so much more with us. And this is, again, for those of you who are dabbling in it, right, or if you're already in it and you want to get really, really good. Now, we work on a straight markup if you do end up using us, okay? It's a 22% markup for professional clerical staff, which is coded as 8810. That's also for bill rates over, pay rates rather, over $25 an hour. Um, it is a simple price plus and you know a lot of you probably pay on your bill rate which is crazy because you get penalized if you're being charged on your on your bill rate if you get really good markups or margins so ours is really simple we are employer of record. That means you don't have to worry about anything. We take care of all the payroll and processing and the workers' comp and all the other insurances, the liability, errors and omission, auto, if it's a, in a hospital, the, you know, the sp specific uh, healthcare type insurance that you need. We do the payroll filings and we, we do the invoicing, credit collections, everything. It's all automated. We take care of everything and we also advance you your funds weekly irrespective of whether the company you know has paid so it's really an amazing service and I'm hoping this webinar will just give you a glimpse on the great great training that we offer all right and as I mentioned and, and then we'll move on to the, the content um, if you use us I am here for you personally to give you regular mentoring and training, one-on-one. -on -one. That means you have a deal, uh, you want some help on how to do some of the things we're talking about in this webinar, that's what I can do for you. All right, so there's pricing strategy, you know, coaching, and my entire library. That's all the stuff on my free training, which hopefully you're on at the dynamicsale.com, all in one place. Any webinar I ever charge for, my famous LinkedIn training, my niche training, all of my eBooks, my my virtual boot camps. Um, it's really an incredible offer uh, that we're giving. Um, coming soon, uh, we're also going to be doing a live monthly show that talks about the economy, what's going on in the niches and market conditions, all for free for you. And as I said, a regular library of contracting training, uh, and uh, again, as well as all of, uh, of this stuff and, and previous material we have. So here's the link. 
Um, you can get it in your handout. It's the dynamicsale.com. Click on top under the back office services or click right on this link here. Uh, signature dash back dash office dash services forward slash and you can see everything you have. I suggest you enroll. It's for free. And at least if you're ready to go, uh, we'll be able to help you instantly. So, um, let's get into mastering this art of contracting and staffing. And uh, those of you who have been doing it, realize a couple of things. One, if you only have to pick one over the other, you probably want to be focusing in on contracting business. Yep, I said it. And I'm a guy that started as perm. But you really, it's an ideal situation if you focus on both. And you need to be doing both. Everyone on this call, if you're only doing contracting, get into perm. But if you're a perm only, direct hire only shop, you need to add this immediately. Even if you only dabble in it, it's a tremendous amount of ongoing revenue. And it's also an exit plan because it really makes your firm, or even if it's just a one person business, much, much, much more sellable down the road. In the last years, this has been made incredibly easy, right? It used to be that you'd have to work for a large firm to do it or someone that has all of these back office relationships. But now you can do contracting business at home, in your small office, with almost no risk, no funding that you need to deal with, really no extra work other than selling it and, and you know taking care of the matches. All right. Now, services like ours have existed. They've really come into their own in the last five years, and we enable you to make this completely turnkey. Now, I'm going to not just show you why you should use us. I mean, that's up to you now to explore. As I said, the training that you're going to get will give you an idea. Um, but you need to be using someone. And in many cases, it doesn't make sense for you to go through the headaches and all the work that needs to you know, be involved in setting up this contracting solution. So the reasons why you should do it is, listen, one contractor out for a year Okay, can yield you ten thousand to thirty thousand extra dollars in profit, right? So, and you need to always have a contracting, you know, a temp solution to their problems. This makes you much more marketable, and it makes you a much more effective vendor. It makes you seem bigger, also, because typically only the bigger players seem, you know, to get into this, right? Another big thing to think about is if you're not doing it, your competition who does offer this is beating you out so much more than, than you know. You're letting your competition literally in the door, and they will also hijack some of your direct hire business. Right? People enjoy one-stop shopping. They like to consolidate their vendors. You've seen all about the vendor list. This will make it easy if they have to narrow down or select between you know, two people. You will get it. Why wouldn't you want to lock out your competitors and get your foot in that door? This is really what's amazing. And those of you who have already dealt with contracting you know, and, and placing temps, realize that the temp is a great way to tell you everything that's going on in the company and able to introduce you to more people, get you new people that you can recruit out. And they are a 40 plus hour a week reminder to your companies that you exist. It is so much easier to get a contractor in there and to continue to get a lot of business without having to make cold calls. Okay, so there's that. And, you know, those of you who lucked into contracting, you know, and your direct hire, uh, you've now realized it is so much easier by far to convert, you know, over a current contractor that you have in there over to direct hire or perm, temp to hire. Uh, than pitching any random candidate that you have. So your perm revenues are actually going to go up from this as well. And I don't even include that in the ten to thirty thousand extra dollars that you have. Also, you know, this works in any economy. You know, perm fees are a luxury and companies we know they need to pay it in a lot of cases, but they want to do everything they can to avoid it. Whereas contractors, and, and especially in the right situations like we can get into, will actually save companies and can save companies money. So it's really great. Uh, those of you who are watching this webinar because you are notified after downloading my free ebook, uh, that's awesome. If you haven't, I've got a great ebook that talks about a bunch of the things that are in this webinar, but also a lot more. And it's in a great downloadable book, and you can get it on the dynamicsale.com right at the top. 
Um, you, you'll see it under back office services, free ebook, or just click on this link right now and download this so you can have some great examples uh, and have, again, all of this at your, your fingertips. So let's get some of the basic stuff out there. And I do explain this in detail in the, in the, the book. Um, so if you've been doing this, you'll know this, but I, I will get into more complex issues. The bill rate is obviously the bill rate. That's what you're charging your clients per hour. The pay rate is the pay. That's what you're paying your candidates on base wages per hour. Now that also has other costs to it, of course, and those are called pay charges. Sometimes pay rate includes pay charges. That'll be the complete pay rate, but it's typically pay rate plus pay charges. And the pay charges are the actual cost that you're going to incur above and beyond this, the base wages, right? These will include uh, items such as the workers' comp insurance. These will include all the withholdings. Uh, right uh, and insurances and all that sort of stuff and it shows as a percentage of pay if you do it on your own you know ballpark you can figure you'll be looking at on average uh, in North America somewhere around 15 percent in additional charges um, just for some of the basic things if you use services such as ours or people that do all the funding obvious funding obviously your rates are going to be higher now your markup, it's different in our business than it is in retail and it confuses some people, but um, our markup is simply the uh, amount that you're multiplying the pay rate by to get to the bill rate. So it doesn't take into account any of the pay charges, okay? It's simply um, a calculation, right? So that if you're paying out $20 an hour and you bill 30, your markup is 50%, or 30 divided by 20 is 1.50. It's a 50% markup, right? 40 would be a $60 an hour. 100% markup if you're uh, paying out 20 would be 40, right? That's the similar markup. Right, a 75% markup, for example, would yield a $35 an hour bill rate, right? And a 100% markup again would yield a $40 bill rate if you're doing 20, right? So that's markup in its simplest terms. And again, it is a little bit different than how they do it in retail. Now, some people talk about markup, other people talk about margin. Which is more important? Well, Margin's much more important, especially when you are making all of the profits or the, the majority of it. Gross margin is gross profit, GM, um, and it is directly related to markup, of course, except it does take into account your pay charges. It's really what you're making per dollar. So total gross margin is simply your billings, okay, what you bill your clients, less the wages, right? Um, and that include the costs above this, so the uh, uh, wages and pay rate. Okay, and uh, pay charges. So your total gross margin is just that. It's what you're left at the end of it per dollar as a percent. Gross margin percentage now will take this as a percent. It's a way that you can measure the business. It's much more accurate for your profit than just markup, right? Because again, markup doesn't take into account the pay charges. So Right. If you wanted to figure this out, um, when you come up with your gross margin percentage, that is truly the percent that you will make per every dollar that you bill. Right. That's the percentage of sale dollars, sales dollars that will become gross profit. Now, on the perm side of the business and the way the accounting handles it for direct hire, your gross margin is always a hundred percent. For a temp, it never is on the contracting side of the business, right? You have all these, you know, you have to pay the people something, which you don't on the perm side. You got to pay for the, the pay charges, right? So, um, again, you simply take your gross margin dollars. That's what you're left with after all of your pay and uh, pay charges and then divide this by your sales dollars that gives you your percentage and I'll show you some examples but what's great is once you know this figure and I'm going to show you how to use it in pricing strategies and what have you you can then always just multiply this percentage by any projected sales dollars that you have and you can arrive at a projected profit or you can use that to play with different scenarios to see how you want to price and I'm going to get into that okay so uh, as we look at this, whoops, sorry about that. 
um, you're going to see that bill rate minus pay rate minus pay charges per hour is gross margin per hour. The total invoice minus the wages and pay and pay charges is total GM. And again, this is just an example of what it looks like. So the invoice minus pay times one plus this pay charge per percentage, right, is total gross margin, right? Meaning, um, just take your invoice and subtract pay times 1.15, or in our case, 1.22, right? That'll give you total gross margin. Here's an example for you. I give a lot of examples in the book. This takes a $45 an hour bill rate, right? A $30 pay. And we're going to assume right now that let's say your pay charges are 13%. That means you do your own funding, your employer of record, all that. This example, again, is a markup of 50%. So if we take the $45 an hour bill, we back out the pay of 30, and then we take the pay charges, right, which are $30 times this 13% or $3.90. So we're backing out $33.90 from the bill. We're left with total gross margin or gross profit that you will take home of $11.10 per hour, right? So um, in this example, your GM percentage will simply take that $11.10 per hour. We divide that by your bill rate of $45, and therefore your GM percentage is 24.67%, meaning that you're going to have a gross profit of 24.67 cents for every um, 100, actually 24 cents for every $1 build, right? That's almost $25 in profit for every $100 that you bill. If you bill at $1,000 on the plan, then you'll make $250. If you bill at $10,000, then you'll make $2,500. If you bill at $100,000, you'll make $25,000. You get the gist. Now, if you use um, a service such as ours, right, um, let's just use the same thing, except now we'll look at the pay charges of 22%. So if your bill rate is 45, your pay is still 30, but now your pay charges for everything, funding, you name it, turnkey, everything, advances, all that, your actual charge that you would be paying us, and again, we pay a lot of that to the government, we pay that to the workers' comp insurance, et cetera, so it's not our profit, but again, it's what you'll be paying out. We back out this 30 plus 660, or 3660, which leaves you a profit of $8.40 an hour. 840 over 45, that's your percentage, it's 18.67%. You will keep almost 19 cents of every dollar that you invoice, okay? So with everything accounted for, you keep almost 19 cents per hour. Now, the ways in your business that you want to use GM percentage, and this is these are just some examples, but if your client wants a contractor for, let's say, three months, right? Let's just figure easy for math. There's 2,000 hours in a year. At 40 hours, it's 2,080. Let's make it simple. So it's 500 hours in a quarter. Then you know that you're going to bill them this 500 hours at $45 an hour, or you're going to invoice them over three months, $22,500. Okay, your gross margin, your total profit, just like perm billings, right? It's really what will go in your pocket will be over $4,200, right? That's simply $22,500 that you figured out the billings are multiplied by this profit that you keep or GM percentage of 0 0.1867, 18.67%. So it's $4,200 in profit per quarter. And this is not a high example. If you keep on doing this at 2,000 hours, so if they last a year, just at this example, that's $16,800 per profit per contractor in this one example. So if you're able to, over time, regularly sell it, which you need to do all the time, then that's an extra $168,000 in your bank account, okay? So this is something, again, that is fully turnkey that you can start today and you can begin working on now. And I'm going to share more ways you can use this and more pricing strategies later. Again, all of our training is free for you if you just use us for this one person. Now, gross profit, gross margin is really what I want you to focus on.
When you worked or if you worked as a contracting person or you worked in a larger firm that had the divisions, you would see that they regularly focused on markup. And that's because, you know, that, that's how they maintain their profit and they didn't want to give a lot of control to the people. And the people that worked contract in a larger company take home a very small amount of the margin. Whereas you, as an owner, as an independent, are going to take home the vast majority, if not all of it. So you're concerned about how much you eat, right? How much you take home. Your total margin is key, right? I really, I'm going to talk about gross margin percentage and what you should shoot for, but as a thermometer, as a guideline. At the end of the day, if you're able to get some good profit, that's great. You know, if you look at the picture on this slide, it shows a really tiny pie. Well, yeah, you might get that whole pie, but do you really care? So, you know, we're concerned not about our markup or whatever, but how big is the total slice? Margin is margin is margin. Just like if you were to make a $200,000 fee, you probably wouldn't sweat it so much that it was 20% if the, uh, as opposed to getting even a full fee on a $30,000 person, right, for a $9,000 fee, right? You're just going to love that you just got a $200,000 fee. So I want you to do the same thing. Focus more on that. Be how concerned um, your portion is and then the size of the pie. The pie size absolutely does matter, right? Perm margin and temp gross margin are the same thing, and that's the way that you need to look at it. And in fact, in your strategy and your pricing, you're going to use these hand in hand so that you can lock in your accounts. Now, a lot of you know you can get a low margin even and a low markup, so both of them are low, um, assignment. They can last for a year, and this is gold. You're going to make so much more total gross margin dollars or gross profit on this over the course of a year than you would at a really high margin, high markup, um, shorter term assignment. You know, engineering and IT are two great examples. They are great contracting niches. And, you know, if you look at the world that I originally came from, which was finance, okay, let's use that one. I mean, I had legal and high-end office, but finance, on average, the assignment would last about three months. Engineering, they last about a year and a half. IT, about a year. Right, so every one fill is worth four there. And again, the bill rates can be higher here, so your margin might be low, but we just care about profit. The higher bill rate and these levels and the length of assignment means you get more margin dollars, right? Even with the lower markup and margin. So if you're planning on doing this because you've just been around contracting people, don't learn from the way they were taught at your own uh, old firm, okay? So we'll talk about more on this when we get into some of the, the pricing. So what's involved, whether you use us or you use our competitor, you do it on your own, here's everything that you need. And I explain all of these really in detail in the ebook. So use the ebook and download that because, again, it's a good adjunct to this. So for one, um, you need to become or someone needs to be employer of record. That is the one that actually employs uh, the contractors, the temps. In our case, the Dynamic Sales Signature Back Office will be the employer of record. If you uh, go ahead and you do all this, then you would be employer of record. You are the one uh, that is responsible for all of the tax filings in that case. Again, with us, we do it all. Um, you are the one that are liable for it. They are your employee. You have to deal with unemployment issues and fighting them. And if there's any uh, lawsuits or whatever the companies have, they will go to the employer of record, etc. So that's very big. So you need to set yourself up there. You need to get licensed for it um, and you know, set up all of your payroll systems and all the other things that I'm going to mention. Insurance and licenses, the biggest ones you need are workers' comp. It could get very complicated. The good news is you can use a workers' comp broker um, that can set you up. The problem with that is, is there are about five or six monopolistic states that require you to work directly with the state. Uh, so, you know, you have issues there. And workers' comp, you need to have some level of volume or they really overcharge you. They true it up each year 
Um, but it is really can be very, very expensive if you're startup or you're small, and if you place your people certainly throughout different jurisdictions or even different workers' comp codes. Again, don't get too confused. Turnkey companies like ours do all of this for you, but I'm just giving you an idea of if you're doing it on your own, what you need. You're going to want general liability insurance. And you will definitely want to be an LLC. I don't care if you're only doing direct hire. You're crazy not to be, um, a, 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 you know, have your LLC so that you don't put your house up and your personal assets. On top of that, though, general liability insurance is great and very important because lots of things happen on the contracting side of the business. Unlike PERM and direct hire, where you know you're an agent in this case you are the employer so things are going to happen and people are going to steal things and you're going to want theft insurance and if anyone drives on the job company type cars for things you're going to want uh, auto insurance you're going to want error and omissions insurance which can be part and you know tied in with uh, general liability but it's more specific so um, you're going to really want to pay uh, and get all of these things and again it could be very expensive if you don't have the volume all right, you need the ability to, to process payroll. Don't do it on your own. So many people do that. Um, at a minimum, use like an ADP. They can do it straight with you. Um, again, we can do it. Other people can do it. Um, but you'll want a company that can handle uh, uh, all the, the filings for you and, and you know make sure everything is set in turnkey and online time cards, if you will. That's next, but online processing. You'll need time cards, of course, online or manual. You'll need to have some sort of front office system or ATS that ties that in. Um, you'll need to deal with credit and collections because it is highly risky uh, and it is very, uh, you know, uh, time intensive. Now, that said, you know, companies like us, again, we advance the money. You don't even have to worry about credit and collections. But you can see that's pretty much everything that you need. And then, of course, you need a source for your money because your clients aren't going to pay for, on average, let's say 30 to 45 days. Some will take 60 to 90 days even. So you need a way to have all this money because you will be in big trouble if you don't pay your temps uh, and you need funding. Now, there's lots of options. There's factoring, okay, and I get into these again in more detail in the book, but in factoring, you know what that is in simple terms is someone will basically buy your receivables and give you a certain amount of percent or cents on the and I strongly suggest if any of you do that you don't you can go as simple as a line of credit that works great that will be with your bank and or funding company but it's traditionally with a bank and that works great as you get a little bit larger and then you know you start getting all this profit from your contracting business and you have enough money coming in to take care of your payroll on a regular basis but you don't want to worry about the ebbs and flows so as you need money to pay these um, uh, contractors on their weekly right you have to pay them weekly no matter what um, you can dip in your line of credit and only be charged for what you use for that week so that's a great way to go when you get bigger and uh, your least expensive of your options. You have traditional funding, and traditional funding will charge you a percentage of your bill rate. And that's the normal way it works. And the, the problem, though, with that is, is you really do get penalized, as I mentioned, for your high markup and high margin business. But funding, if you are employer of record and you're getting your own insurances, can still be a lot cheaper than a lot of the other options. All right. So that's basic funding. They will provide money for you, but they will fund everything. And all the invoicing that you do, based upon that, you'll charge a percentage of that. Okay, um, and it doesn't have to be that. It could just be for the amount of money similar to a line of credit. You can get full service funding, okay, um, and you, you are the employer of record still, and they, you could sort of outsource everything else. You'll also pay on the bill rate of that. They will. They can sort of handle anything in between. They can handle, do all your time cards for you, uh, basically all the back office processing. But as an example, our service is cheaper than doing that. You don't have to take on the risk of employer of record. So it is very expensive. If you have a lot of volume, you can negotiate with them to get really you know, much better rates. So let's say it could be comparable to what you would pay for us, or maybe even a little cheaper if you're bigger, right? if you have good volume. Then you have complete full service, and that's 
the, like the dynamic sales signature back office where we are employer of record. We handle everything for you and it's complete full service and outsourcing of this. And, and so those are your options. You either need to do all of it or some of it or none of it on your own, right? And they each have pros and cons to it. If you're smallish, I think you're crazy to get involved in it. I am a guru in this. I set this up for my old company and it took almost a year really to get everything right. All right. So uh, again, this is a slide I showed you before, so you have it at your fingertips. This is everything that you get as an example in a full service outsourcing the employer of record. Okay? Now, for someone like us, it does sound too good to be true. And again, that's why I'm on this call, to give you guys great training and to let you know you should get all this great training and great information for free because you need to do it somewhere. And we work on volume. So even if just one out of every few of you give us one temp, it's a win-win. And that's how we're able to offer all of our other stuff for free also. So... Next, I get lots of questions by veterans and by newbies that want to know, how do I price out the contractors? Like, where do I even begin? So I want to get into that now because I think that's really key. Well, there's a couple of rules of thumb, but there are no absolutes, okay? The higher your level of expertise that the candidate has, the more difficult to find, the higher the niche as a rule the higher the margin percentage should be, meaning you'll be able to get away with a bigger markup. They tie in together. Of course, the, the higher your overall bill rate should be, right? The more specific or detailed your niche is, and I talk about that on my great program. I'm not going to sell that here, but Mastering Your Niche, also for free, great hour and a half uh, webinar um, for anyone that, that does this stuff. But I, I talk about that there. The greater your, your bill rates will be and your bill rate, uh, uh, and the greater your, uh, overall margin and markup's gonna be. The more volume you get, oh, you know, in general, lower margins. And that's obvious in a contract model, but, Listen, if someone's going to call you and you're dabbling in temp or you have a smallish business and they're going to offer you five contractors that you could put out tomorrow for six months, you're absolutely going to not want to lose that and you're going to work with them on a lower markup, lower margin business to get that. All right, and again, I'm going to give you some specifics besides these generalities. If you have these one-offs, you know what some people call the retail model, um, which is, hey, they just use you when their other services fail or when they're in a difficult situation, well, then you, you can absolutely and should get away with a higher margin, higher markup business. Again, I use margin and markup similarly here because once you know what your pay charges are, your markup will always directly correlate into a certain margin, right? If it's 22 percent your markup will always yield you know the same same markup will always yield the same margin and I do give you pricing calculators and stuff like that um, when you're interested if, if you join okay so again I think you will dabble in most cases but not all and you want to be aware as I said of total gross margin now when you price the biggest thing that I try to break on you do want to maximize your margin for sure and your markup because that will mean that you get right a greater gross margin, the greater gross profit. And you can do that of one of two ways. You can either increase your bill rate right, or decrease your pay rate. So things that are going to determine your bill rate, and these are some things that you might not have thought about on the contracting side of the, the perm side of the business. And those of you in contracting, you probably don't focus on all these all the time. Now, each of these bullet points will determine whether your bill rates go up or they go down. 
right? So, for example, as I mentioned, the volume of orders, right? The size, the potential, uh, you'll probably be more flexible and lower, right? Lower your bill rate if you can get a lot more. Your client's expectations in budgets, we need to ask them if they've got a pretty good budget, a pretty good expectation, right? Then, you know, we're going to want to charge accordingly. Well, if do you have a previous relationship with them? Now, that might mean you can go in higher or lower, maybe to buy some business to get in. When I say buy, I just mean, you know, uh, you can't even be similar to what their existing relationships are doing or they won't use you. So it depends. Previous, you can go higher or lower if it's a really good one. If it's previous and you had issues, you might have to go lower. The sexiness of the job. Well, if it's really sexy and it's great and it's something everyone wants and you have good candidates for it, plenty of them, well, then you know you can probably be a little flexible there on the bill rate because you'll be able to get some people at great pay. Um, the uh, length of the assignment, right? Well, we talked about that. That's key. Don't price the same thing for a two-day assignment you know, versus a... 20 day or 200 day or 300 day assignment what's the competition on the job the greater the competition if you come in late in the game the higher your rate can be the greater the competition if you're brand new again timing wise maybe lower do they require an interview for this contracting assignment is it very technical is it long if they interview your bill rate should be higher it's like the old puppy dog clothes Right? It's the same way as if someone interviews your candidate in the perm side and they say, hey, I like your person, but I, we need to talk about lowering your fee because I got someone else. No, they don't. Once they meet your people and they get an emotional attachment to it, so if an interview is required, you can go and hire, and I want you to always do that. So I talked about where we are in the process. That's key. The difficulty in finding the person we talked about. Is it temp to hire? And that's very important now because if it is and you're going to work in a perm fee there, well, then you could say, you know what, I want to make some money on this contracting stuff, much less than I would if I was just a contracting player, because I'm going to look at what I'll make if we convert them and the temp side of the business. All right, so you factor that in. All right, the commute, if it's really far, if they're in a remote location, if the place is yucky, um, they're probably going to have to pay more. Right, the spread that you will learn, and uh, again, that's very similar to what we talked about on the volume. If you're going to make a huge spread, and spread is is simply an absolute dollar amount. Same markup can yield very different spreads. A twenty dollar an hour uh, uh, pay at a hundred percent markup is forty dollars. That's a twenty dollar spread, forty minus twenty. Whereas if it's a hundred dollar pay and even a fifty percent markup, that's a fifty dollar spread, right? Hundred, you're right, hundred and fifty minus. Minus that, right? So it's it's the spread, the total, in essence, gross margin dollars per hour, right? Will you buy business? And we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit, right? How much of a hot button match will the candidate have, especially if it converts? So all those things are really key. Now, on the pay side, on the same deal, you want to look at the, really the exact opposite things. But what are the candidate expectations, right? The lower they are coming in, the lower you should be able to talk about it. And you need to stretch them, just like you did on a perm fee, on a perm salary, rather. How sexy is that job, right? If it's great and everyone wants it, you can get away with a lower rate. If the length of assignment is much longer, you can, again, it depends on the candidate and what they want. But you could probably talk them into a lower rate because it's much more stable. Will it convert to perm? They will, same deal. They want a perm job. That was their mission. You know, they should be more flexible, right? The level, right? That's the commute, the length of assignment, how desperate they are. Do you need to buy the candidate out or any issues, right? How many hot buttons? Same thing, but now that's on the pay side. So, you know, as I really try to stress when it comes to pricing, in order to maximize your margin, you never want to just multiply by a markup, right? Or use a flat margin and back into one or the other. Always say, hey, what do I think my bill rate should be here based upon the things that Neil just talked about? Based upon what they're you know, using the competitor, based upon what the candidate said they wanted, right? Based upon what they would make per hour, right? That'll give you a good idea. And then, so we do pay separately, we do bill separately. Then and only then, you kind of want to divide them. As a rule of thumb, and again, I love margin and markup as a thermometer to show you whether you're nuts or whether something looks amuck. 
industrial type placements, you know, you're going to average on the contract side 18 to 30 percent markup. Okay, not talking margin, but markup. And on the retail side, 25 to 50 percent typically. Okay, on the clerical or office side, it gets a little higher. You'll be looking at 20 percent, which is not a lot of profit, right? On a markup, up to 40 percent. Whereas retail, which is what my old business that I used to have did, will do like a 40 to 8 percent. Those are one off. Technical, you know, again, they tend to be lower on the IT or engineering side um, because they're much, much more expensive, much higher rates overall, right, in terms of just raw dollars, and they last a lot longer. So you can look at 30 to 50 percent on the contract side and still 50 to 100 for retail. Or even call it 40 to 100, but even 40%, if you ever got that, 50% can be unbelievable. Okay, so again, it gets lower as you get into these very long term sort of assignments. All right. So as a rule, and again, my rule of thumb there with the picture, your retail business should start at, look around 50% as, as, as your, you know, what you're aiming for, right? Uh, as a minimum, but with the goal being around 75%. But again, that is just, to look when you're done. So if you said, hey, I can get away with this on the bill, I can get away with this on the pay, and I will still help you. You know, if you're brand new to this on the on the temp side and some other slides and one-on-one -on -one consulting for free if you work with me at all, but um, it, you could still make, like I said, a boat, boat, boatload of money uh, doing it, and we're still worried, though, about the total dollars that we're going to make on there. So 75, I say, hey, that looks reasonable. If it came out to 100, you might say, hey, am I overpricing? Maybe, maybe not. But if you look at the bill and you look at the pay separately, you're good. If you need to negotiate so that you can get the business, then voila. But the only way you can maximize your margin percentage and also, your gross margin dollars, your gross profit is one of two things or a combo. Increase your bill rate and or lower your pay rate, right? Or lower your costs, right? So again, a lot of you will just lower your costs by using us. That's one example. Your total margin dollars will automatically go up. But again, that's what you can do. And in my experience and in all my consulting and training, I've learned that people focus on really one or the other, meaning on the pay side or on the bill side. They'll figure out roughly what the pay is. Kind of easy because your candidates start to tell you, and if you talk to four or five contractors, you'll know roughly what you need. And then they multiply that by um, a markup, right? Or they divide by a margin percentage to come into a bill rate. That's not the way to do it, right? Or they'll come up with a bill rate that they use for every position that's the same, and then they'll divide by the, the markup, right, or multiply and, and subtract the margin out. And it's crazy. So I want you to get into any of those bad habits and completely separate and negotiate. Your objective of pricing contract business, as I mentioned earlier, it's to maximize your margin. This spread, the total dollars, by getting the highest possible, and possible is a key word there, bill rate that you can, and the lowest possible pay rate that you can, and then this is really huge, under the circumstances, meaning those bullets that I showed you under bill and pay, where you're coming in, what the volume is, what your relationship is with them, will it go, will it convert to perm, right? So each case is different. Under the circumstances are really key. Every candidate you work with, in theory, should come up with a different price level. Every job order or work order or, or contracting rec, whatever you call it that you work with, is different and should be priced differently. But just look it in that simple term, okay? So get out of your habits of dividing. If every markup you have is 50%, something is wrong because you don't want to set an absolute floor. You want to be able to, even if your goal as a business, and if you're a manager of a team, and your goal, let's say, is 50, you can't walk away from 50% markup business. Some of it just makes great sense to do it at 40%. But you also know that if you just do what I just told you, in some cases, the math's going to work out where you get a 60% markup. So on average, you will end up coming in at this 50%, okay? So, and by the way, I will have room for some questions at the end. So, how do you price on existing perm orders? I get that a lot. 
Um, and a lot of you people that are already doing it, I think, need some help on it. And those who have never done it before, um, it's really key. And as I mentioned, GM is GM is GM. So make, make sure that you do this the same way as if you were going to make a direct hire placement only. So, for example, you have a $15,000 fee. And let's just call that a $60,000 job. It's a 25% fee. So your fee would be $15,000. But they say, hey, I want to go tempt to hire. Or, as I put in my ebook, you got to get good at selling this no matter what. You're always going to want to be pitching contractors. Always do that to try to get in many different ways. So you could then, let's say, sell this candidate in, let's say, for a three-month assignment, and then they're going to uh, convert over to PERM. So, you know, it's a $15,000 fee. It's going to last three months. So a $60,000 candidate, and I just took $60,000, divide by 20 if you want, which would be $30 an hour or 2,080 hours a year. We know that roughly, right, that we should pay no more really for the most case and there are some exceptions than what they would make on their own and often uh, uh, if this was full time and often they make less when they go on contract sometimes they make more but often less so a $60,000 person would get this $29 an hour all right and like I said their foot in the door rate you know just for them to get in there should be less but so if you can build a client let's say 50 an hour and they just told you they were in that ballpark or you've heard from others or again you just want to start throwing out some numbers this uses a 72 percent markup in that example well how much would you make based upon your funding so in this example if you pay $29 an hour to this person, which again, I think you can do lower, and your total rate, that pay plus uh, our service fee is uh, 22%, so 122%, um, all right, then you will end up making $14.62 per hour, right? So that is $50 an hour that we're going to bill, less the cost of $29 an hour plus the 22%. So the total cost of $35.38. All right? So your $14.62 an hour profit at 40 hours a week is $585 a week or $7,600 profit over three months. That's an example of a $30,000 profit over the course of the year. In this example, we said, look, they want to convert at three months. So if we arrived and they said they can only do $50 an hour, okay, as an example, we would say, okay, here's the math that we just did. We know that we just made $7,600. We know we want to make $15,000. So at a minimum, I want to charge them a conversion fee, and when they're asking about the fee, of $7,400. Now, it could be more. You could make it $7,500 round. You could start at eight or whatever the case is. But that will mean you will end up making $15,000. Now, you might say, again, well, Neil, I would have made that if I did direct perm. Yeah, but your odds now of making this perm placement have shot through the ceiling, which you'll only see the first time you convert someone. And often you can make more, but again, this significantly increases uh, your shot. Okay? You can also agree to give this person away for free if you want it, let's say four or five months. And now you're going to say, well, Neil, I'm only making $10,200 if I do that. I know. But now you have like a 75% chance, uh, just throwing out a number, of closing that deal at $10,000. Whereas you only have a 20% chance or 15% chance of closing that deal if you work perm only. So what would you rather have, a 10% chance of, of making $15,000 or a 75% chance of making $11,000? You know the answer to that, and that's how the math works. But you can do anything you want for this. Now, Neil, why don't you just go through GM percentage and show us an example? Well, back in an hour by hour. Because I want you just to see different ways you could think about this business. You can, of course, use GM percentage. And if we use GM percentage, it makes it really easy. And you could throw in any situation. So $50 an hour bill rate, your pay rate is 29 our charge is 22%. And there you go again. We have your 1462 total margin, total profit that you make per hour. We divide that by the $50 an hour that you're charging, meaning your total gross margin percentage is 29.24%. So you could take any bill rate situation you get over any rate that they come up with, right? or rather any length of assignment, so you can figure out exactly what you're going to make over that, and you can multiply by that to see your profit. So it's just an easier way when you work with percentages to do it. Okay. 
So billing's at $50 an hour. If we multiply by that each week, we make $2,000. Each quarter, you make $26,000. And in a year, right, $104,000. Uh, um, again, that's billings rather, not make. Sorry. So you, that's your billings. Your gross profit then is going to be 585, 7602, 31,000. Right? Same examples as the last page, but I'm just showing you how you can use GM percentage, right? So play with this, or if you join us, use our calculator, which can help you with this. Other strategies. You can back into the length of the assignment right by this $15,000 fee to help you arrive at a bill rate right so especially this is great let's say they want a free conversion well what can you do all right well we know all right we want to make $15,000 profit and they want to do this over 500 to 520 hours right so we know we need to make a profit of fifteen thousand dollars over five hundred twenty hours that we're gonna bill that's twenty eight eighty five profit we need per hour all right we know again in this example our pay rate is twenty nine we know when we add up the twenty two percent cost as the example in our service right it's gonna be thirty five thirty eight so we add thirty five thirty eight and the twenty eight eighty five right the profit you need plus your total cost and there's a bill rate example sixty four twenty three at sixty four twenty three bill rate because you have no idea Neil I've never done this before my client wants a free conversion this is how you do it and you could change that uh, it would be less so if you did it over four months you would just change the number above right and obviously it would be a little less than the sixty four right and they might say well that's too high we we can't do that we can do x and you can use my last example um you can also agree on a lower rate now but then figure out what the difference is and convert that uh, add that conversion fee uh, let's say at three months right or uh, decide it'll be a four month and back into it this is how you can do it so you can use this gm and uh, all this information to back into bill rates or back into conversion fees and have fun with it it's not exactly a science you can play with any of them okay what else can you do well anything right you can make your contracting profit at a much lower bill rate using the methods that I discussed earlier and then charge whatever the 10% conversion fee or 15% or a flat fee right now this was giving you an example where we have an existing perm job and you're trying to make money different ways this also can work for rule of thumb if it's just a, a contracting job and you don't know where to start right so that's how newbies can determine or you can really assess the business that you've been doing man neil i haven't been pricing really the right way this is a great refresher i got to get back on my game right and, and as I said, your candidates are definitely going to help you determine what the normal pay rates are, and your clients will almost always share, or at least often share, what their budgets are. Okay? And remember, you will make more money when you make your contracting revenue and a conversion fee, um, and you know, also throw your direct hire in there. Right? Work on um, perm jobs, and I write here with perm only candidates at the same time. If you get a, 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 a position that might go temp to perm, direct hire, it might convert. I always want you to sell them on also using perm. Why limit themselves to only people that are unemployed, right? Why? It doesn't make sense. And on the same note, when they only say they want to go perm, say, no, listen, I can get you some great people. The best way to interview them, right, is to see their work. Right? Literally bring them in. And it is the best. Except you haven't been selling them on that in the past. Okay? So think about that. Now, um, you need to think about when you come up with your pricing or know if something might convert, you always need to know what's happening and why the position's open. And there's a lot more situations that can happen outside of what you're used to on the direct hire front. Okay, so um, is it because they're using contractors instead of perm hires, meaning they don't want to pay a perm fee, um, or they they won't even be able to have a perm hire? There's a hiring freeze, or they don't want to pay the benefits or whatever. But it really is a perm position, so you can price that accordingly. Is it a leave? There's some sort of long-term leave, or there's a maternity leave. Well, we know they're not going to convert. So you don't even want to count on that or any likelihood. It could be a project, and you could put multiple people on in a project. It could just be a backlog, 
right? Or it's really, as I gave you some examples, it really is a perm opening, but they're using this contracting angle to lower their costs and to mitigate their risks, right? So that's, again, one of the great reasons why you need to go in. There's seasonal hires, which are very important. Right? Or it's just a busy time, a regular close, or they've got some high volume that they tend to be processing. So make sure you always know the reasons why. So as I said, you need to be selling this all the time. I gave you some pricing examples. Now let's get into some of the things I alluded to. And this is how you market them. Sell all the time. Try before you buy. Look, it's okay if you're direct hire only. Why would they not want to try if you have someone unemployed? And believe me, for the reasons I told you, you want to get that foot in the door. Because you're going to see there are so many people that get hired, converted over after they've done contracting work that you would never place in a million years because of the way they look, because of their handshake, the way they dress, their personality. Not in a million years, but they are amazing at what they do. Um, just like your reference said, but when they see them there on the contract side, they hire them or they still love you. So always try to sell before you buy. The puppy dog clothes I gave you, it is the best way. And once they do see your people, um, they end up falling in love with them. You know, and when you know, I say, look, interview, and I mentioned that before. I said I'd give you a couple of tips. Well, listen. I will set up the perm interviews for you, but I do, I strongly suggest that I get a contractor in there for you for the next three months. If you find someone perm, then we'll let them go. But the best interview is where they can see them in action. And this is something that I say similar to what I do on the resumes. I tell people, listen, interviews stink. There are some people that stink on the interview, right? And they so they give a horrible bad interview, and it means that they're a bad candidate. I got some people that you know, give a horrible interview, and they're great candidates. I give some people who give great interviews, but they're really bad candidates. And I give some people who give great interviews, but they're great candidates. In other words, you can't tell, right? You, you can't tell. The only way you can really tell is by seeing their work in action. It's the same thing I say with a resume when they say, I need to see a resume. Resumes will tell you anything. I got great resumes for great candidates. I got great resumes where the candidate stinks. I got horrible resumes where the candidate's horrible. And I got horrible resumes where the candidate's awesome. That's why you're using me. Okay, so I want you to use that. I want you to go back to looking at ads, right? Ads that you see posted on their website, on job boards, things that you never do anymore because every rookie perm recruiter in the world does it. But now you're going to come in from the ad perspective and go in a couple of weeks later, a week or two later. They now have a backlog. Everyone's selling them on perm. You're going to go in, and especially when you have a great unemployed candidate that, you, that, has, that fits that position and you want to skill market them in there even better. So look for all this gravy money and always sell any unemployed candidate that you ever have to any order, meaning anyone that is ever out of work that you are working on on a perm job, straight perm, I want you to always have a bell go off that says, wow, I got to get them in there. I got to get there awesome. I got to get their foot in the door somewhere in the contract side because I'm going to make this perm deal. Right And skill market those people when you have them and you don't even have a perm job, skill market them just like you should be doing on the perm side of the business. Okay, so this is something that's different than perm. All right? Now, granted, you've always seen competition with your uh, uh, you know, uh, perm uh, competition. Yeah, it's redundant, but you know what I mean. But clients, when they fill a temp, a contracting order through an agency, what they do is they get the only the best available at the time. It's not the best because their best available contractor might be out on assignment or not ending for another two weeks. Um, or they don't have anyone available because there's always a chicken and the egg thing. And right, people need to be unemployed, able to start a contracting position. So the odds of someone on an assignment right now being the best person aren't likely. Right? So when you skill market or you call anyone that says, well, they have someone on, the, on, the, on a contract basis, the odds are that they're not that great. And what I train people, and you'll see this if you join my stuff for free, on my virtual boot camps under Neil Temp and NeilPerm.com, I talk a lot about skill marketing and objection handling and 
one of the things we talk about um, is when you're pitching your temp candidates and say, well, we already have someone in there, your question's going to be very pointed and direct, which is, hey, listen, how much are you loving them? Not how's it going, how's that temp that you had in there going, right? But how much are you loving them? Because the answer is very pointed. And you'll hear in their voice, well, they're okay, or, you know, they're not bad. And that's why I want you to really make it difficult, okay? I already told you about selling both situations, so here's a slide on it. Always, if you have temp, try to convert it into perm. If there's any perm there, if it's a perm-only order, try to get them to go temp because we know there's a perm need and try to go both temp and or temp to hire. All right, the next thing is I get a lot of, Neil, should I lower my pricing for volume? And this is super dangerous. Well, in general, yes, if you're going to get volume right now, you want to be concerned. You want to still try to get the highest you can. But if that doesn't work, yes, you want to be very creative and come up with the right price. That said, Lowering your prices to be lower than what your competition does or lowest in the market, thinking that's going to yield you this great business, it will not happen. Believe me, I've beta tested this also in a lot of offices. It doesn't work, and it doesn't work for a lot of reasons, okay? Um, you will not get more in return, okay? And, you know, especially if you're a manager, people, they're going to tell you, we're more expensive than our competition. If we just lowered our markup or lower our perm fees, you know, we're going to get more business. And it doesn't, it doesn't happen when you do it. it. As a rule, it just doesn't work. Once you lower your prices, it's very hard to raise it. And the thing with pricing is you don't want to overdo it, but it is a big perception point in your value of your service. A very famous article that came out in 2008 in The Economist had to do with this study they did about cheap wine and um, expensive wine. And they found that the cheap wine, when they told people that it was much more expensive and it was private label, uh, ended up having like twice the likes, right? You know, at twice the rating strictly based upon the price point. And there's tons of stories that are about this. Um, you got to be very careful with it. I, I, I'm not contradicting myself. I'm saying, yes, I'm not going to judge you, and I will absolutely do the best I can, but at the end of the day, I'm going to make the money I can for those four or five temps. Or if I think there's big potential, I don't want to jeopardize it and be a pig. But don't think that, oh, i got to just do this and I'm going to lower it or I'm just going to come in with everyone at this lower rate or markup because then I'm going to get a lot more business. It does not work that way. Okay? So um, you need to get a lot in place and you need to get it now. Okay? Um, training. Uh, really, I strongly suggest look for my free webinars. Put your one temp through so you can get all my temp and contractor training. I've got unbelievable stuff. And the temp business is full of nuances that are very, very different. Decide what your strategy is going to be, and it doesn't have to be that difficult. Get your tools in place. They could be minimal if you're going to use someone like us, or I've already listed out in the ebook shows you everything you need. Insurances, we talked about that, the employer of record. And again, I urge you to please check us out at this link on our back office services. All right. So I do hope that you all got huge value out of this webinar today. It's tough in an hour to try to cover everything you want to hear and you know and, and you need. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. You will get instant access to this webinar, all of my other contracting webinars, all of my other training stuff, and all of the ongoing stuff. And all you need is one regularly through me. So please consider just moving over one. Irrespective of me and us, Start selling temp, okay, and start selling it more and sell contract to every client for every situation today. If you're only selling contract, then again, use the tips that we talked about, right? Always try to convert your perm orders to temp. Always work on the total gross margin dollars and maximizing your markup which is going to be based upon two separate thought processes, maximizing your bill rate and then minimizing your pay rate. And then when we're done, let's look at where the markup came in. You got to get on this bandwagon. You're not too late. The contracting business is huge and it's moving fast and you got to get your infrastructure ready and ready and ready to go. That's what you'll get. 
Again, use me, use anybody, but I need you to really think about your temp business, think about your contracting business if you have it, and what you need to do. So we're actually already out of time. Um, you can email me questions at neil at the dynamicsale.com and I will address them. Um, let me just pick up a couple of quick questions in closing here that I think can benefit everyone. Um, neil, as employer of record, do you take all of the risk? And the answer to that is yes. If you use us, we are the employer of record. The only risk that you actually take will be if a client folds and doesn't pay at all. You do have some collection risk. But um, we do offer plans. If you don't want to have any of that, it's just more expensive. Any lawsuits, uh, any uh, issues, your clients can always sue anyone they want, but you're just an agent in that process, and we would be employer of record. So we deal with those issues. We get hit with workers' comp and lawsuits and unemployment. So that is correct. Um, Neil, I don't quite follow why bill rates are any worse than pay rates when it comes to funding companies. They're not necessarily worse. What you need to do is put on a sheet of paper what you're paying. It depends what your rate is. Um, at really low levels of pay and bill, a flat uh, on markup, a, a flat bill rate can work better. In our case, we tend to be cheaper than almost everybody. And if you get an, even a decent markup, we're much cheaper than the services that, let's say, charge a 7 or an 8% flat fee on the top. You know, I want you to maximize your margin. Why? And, and it's, it's you know, more difficult to figure out down the road. What happens if you, you know, give people raises and your clients? In our case, you'll only be charged for the raise on the pay side, not on the bill side with all the markup. So, but it's very easy. If you have any questions, I can do a spreadsheet for you, a proposal. I already have sheets that will show you the difference between what you're paying and, let's say, what we do, or, or you can just do it on your own, okay? Um, Neil, is there anything that's not included with uh, your signature back office? Uh, again, I, I, I don't want to make this a full commercial. It's as turnkey as you get within the contracting side of the business. So check that all out. So um, all right, we are done with our time. I hope you found this hugely valuable. Keep your inboxes open for future webinars to come. Please take a minute and go to our enrollment form. You'll see that right on the back office side. Take a minute to sign yourself up this way. Um, you are ready to use us as an option and ready to go, and I look forward to working with all of you in the future. Thank you so much, and carpe diem to everybody.